Good morning, students. Myself, Divya Jain, Associate Professor, Technocrats Institute of Technology, Bhopal. Our today's topic is Introduction to Wireless Communication, Mobile Telephony, and GSM Architecture. So first of all, I would like to give the introduction of wireless uh, technology. So what is wireless communication? Wireless communication involves the transmission of information over a distance without the help of wires, cables, or any other form of electrical conductors. Wireless communication is a broad term that incorporates all procedures and forms of connecting and communicating between two or more devices using a wireless signal through wireless communication technologies and devices. Wireless communication is by any measure the fastest growing segment of the communication industry. As such, it has captured the attention of media and the Im imaginations of the public. Cellular systems have experienced exponential growth over the last decade, and there are currently around 2 billion users worldwide. Indeed, cellular phones have become a critical business tool and part of everyday life in most developed countries and are rapidly supplanting antiquated wireline system in many developing countries. In addition, wireless local area network currently supplement or replace wired network in many, in many homes, business and campuses. Many new applications, including wireless sensor networks, automated highways and factories, smart homes appliances, remote telemedicine, are emerging from research ideas to concrete systems. The explosive growth of wireless systems coupled with the proliferation of laptop and palm top computers indicate a bright future of wireless network, both as standalone system as a part and as a part of large networking infrastructure. However, many technical challenges remain in designing robust wireless networks that deliver the performance necessary to support the emerging applications. So after that, I would like to discuss history of wireless communication. A digital radio can transmit a continuous bit stream or it can group the bits into packets. The latter type of radio is called a packet radio and is characterized by the by bus T transmission. The radio is idle except when it transmits a packet. The first network based on packet radio, AlohaNet, was developed at University of Hawaii in 1971. The network enabled computer sites at seven campuses spread out, spread out over four islands for communicate with a central computer or over via radio transmission. The history of wireless communication started with the understanding or magnetic and electric properties observed during the early days by the Chinese, Greek, and Roman cultures and experiments carried out in 17th and 18th centuries. What are the features of wireless communication? The evolution, the evolution of wireless technology has brought much advan uh, advancement with its effective features. The transmitted distance can be anywhere between a few meters, for example, a television remote control, and thousands of kilometers, for example, radio communication. Wireless communication can be used for cellular telephony, wireless access to the internet, wireless home networking, and so on. Other examples of application of radio wireless technology include GPS unit, uh, garage door openers, wireless computer mic, keyboards, and handsets, handphones, headphones, radio receivers, satellite television, broadcast television, and cordless telephony. And there are some advantage of wireless technology over wired technology. Wireless communication involves transfer of information without any physical connection between two or more points. Because of this absence of any physical infrastructure, wireless communication has certain advantage. This would often include collapsing distance collapsing distance or space. Wireless communication has several advantages. The most important one are discussed here. First is cost effectiveness. 
wired communication in a entails the use of connections connection wires in wireless network communication does not require elaborate physical infrastructure or maintenance practices hence the cost is reduced example any company providing wireless communication services does not incur a lot of cost and as a result it is enable it is able to charge cheaply with regard to its customer fees now the next is flexibility wireless communication enables people to communicate regardless of their location it is not necessary to be an office or some telephone booth in order to pass and receive messages miners in the outback can rely rely on satellite phones to call their loved ones and thus help empower their general welfare by keeping them in touch with people who mean the most to them convenience more uh, wireless communication devices like mobile phones are quite simple and therefore allow anyone to use them wherever they may, may be there are there is no need to physically connect anything in order to receive or pass messages for example wireless communication services can also be seen in internet te technologies such as wifi with no network cables hampering movement we can now connect with almost anyone every anywhere and any time now the next advantage is speed Im improvements can also be seen in speed the network connectivity or the accessibility were much improved in accuracy and speed for example a wire remote can operates a system faster than a wired one the wireless control of a machine can easily stop its working if something goes wrong whereas direct operation can't act so fast then the next one is accessibility the wireless technology help easy accessibility as the remote areas where ground lines can't be properly led are being easily connected to the network for example in rural regions online education is now possible educators no longer need to travel to far flung areas to teach their lessons thanks to live streaming of their educational modules now the last one is the constant connectivity constant connectivity also ensure that people can respond to emer emergencies relatively quickly for example a wireless mobile can ensure you a constant connectivity uh, though you move from one place to uh, one place to another place or while you are traveling whereas a wired landline can't uh, uh, provide this facility now the the next feature of wireless communication is mobile telephony so uh, here i am discussing mobile telephony and its uh, the terminology is related to it among the various term used in mobile telephony the most used one will be discussed here that is one part of mobile telephony is mobile station the mobile station that is also called ms communicate the information with the user and move modifies it to the transmission protocols of the air interface to communicate with the bss the user information communicates with the ms through a microphone and a speaker for the speech keyboard and display for short messaging and the cable connection for other data terminals the mobile station has two elements that is mobile equipment and subscriber identity module that is also called sim card then what is mobile equipment mobile equipment is a piece of hardware that the customer purchases from the equipment manufacturer the hardware piece contains all the components needed for the implementation of the protocols to interface with the user and the air interface to the base station now the next part of uh, our ms system that is mobile station system is sim card which is inserted in our mobile unit this is the smart card issued at the subscription to identify the specification of user such as address and type of services the calls in the gsm are directed to the sim rather than the terminal sms are also stored in the sim card it carries every user's personal information which enable a number of useful application that means all the information related to the user are inserted in the sim card now the next part of our mobile telephony system is base station 
A base station transmits and receives user data. When a mobile is only responsible for its user's data transmission and reception, a base station is capable to handle the calls of several subscribers simultaneously. The, the subparts of base station is base transceiver station. The user data transmission takes place between the mobile phone and the base station through the base transceiver station. A transceiver is a circuit which transmits and receives that is that does both. Means you can uh, see in uh, your real life that the uh, towers located on the rooftop of uh, some buildings that is called base station and the antennas uh, implanted on these uh, base stations are called the base transceiver station. Uh, now the next part of the mobile telephone system is mobile switching center that is MSC. The MSC is nothing but the mobile uh, service provider offices where the switches are uh, present and uh, the MS, uh, MSC also provide the billing facilities and other uh, services related to calling. MSC is the hardware part of the wireless switches that can communicate with the PST and PST means what? Uh, public switch telephone network switches using the signaling system that is SS7 signaling protocol as well as other MSCs in the coverage area of service provider. The MSC also provides for communications with other wired and wireless networks as well as support for registration and maintenance of the connection with the mobile stations. This is the different part of mobile telephony subsystems. First is mobile station, as I have discussed uh, in the previous slide. The two parts of this mobile station is SIM card and mobile equipment. And other subsystem is base station, which contains uh, base transceiver station and uh, base uh, system controller, base station controller. Then another part is network subsystem in which the MSC is located and MSC contains some switches, home location register, visitor location re register, equipment identity register, and authentication center. So MSC provide all the information, all the switching uh, required for connect, providing the connectivity from one user to another user, billing facilities and all. And after that, this MSC provide the connectivity of base station with PSTN, ISDN, PSPDN, CSPDN, the different switching network, different uh, networks. Okay, so first year uh, our mobile, mobile station is connected to the base station through wireless connection and then base station is connected to the network subsystem through wired connections. Then the, uh, we talk about the different channel used in the mobile telephone. Channels, Ch what is channel? Channel is a range of frequency allotted to particular service or system. Now in mobile telephony, there are two types of channel that first is control channel and another one is voice channel. So control channel is further divided into two types of channel that is forward control channel and a reverse control channel. So what is control channel? Con radio channel used for transmission of call setup, call request, call initiation, and other beacon or control purposes. Means when we hear the ringtone, dialer tone, and uh, the setting up uh, tones are uh, send, send and receive on these control channels. So what is for forward control channels? Radio channel used for transmission of information from the base station to the mobile. So forward control channels carry the information from base station to mobile and reverse control channel used for transmission of information from mobile to base station. Here we can see from mobile, uh, from uh, the mobile base station to mobile transmission, we use forward control channel and from mobile station to base station, we use reverse control channel. After that voice channel comes into the picture. Uh, after setting up the call, uh, there is a channel used for uh, conversation purpose between the uh, conversation between the two users. So we, so we use voice, voice channel for that. So radio channel used for voice or data transmission are called voice channels. Then another terminology is related to mobile telephony is handoff, homer and transceivers. What is handoff? It is defined as transferring a call from, from the channel or base station to another base station. That means when a user moving from one place to another place and the user is entering from one base station network to another base station network. So when the another base another network provide the user services, this process is called handoff. 
then what is roamer a mobile station which operates in a service area other than that from which services has been subscribed are called roamer then trans receiver a device capable of, capable of simultaneously transmitting and receiving radio signals are called trans receiver antennas then the frequency reuse is another terminology used in mobile telephony frequency reusing is the concept of using the same radio frequencies within a given area that are separated by considerable distance with minimal interface to establish communication frequencies frequency reuse offer the following benefits allow communication within cell on a given frequency limit escaping power to adjacent cells allow reuse of frequency in nearby cells use uh, user uh, uses same frequency for multiple uh, uh, cover stations 10 to 50 frequencies per cell means by using frequency reuse concept uh, we can allow the same frequency uh, can be used by multiple user after, uh, in a certain distance for example when capital n cells are using the same number of frequencies and k is the total number of frequency used in a system suppose a system is divided into n number of cells and total system is using k number of total frequencies so then each cell site having the frequency is calculated by the formula k by n in advanced mobile phone services that is amps when when k is 395 and n is capital uh, n is 7 capital n is 7 then frequencies per cell on the on an average will be 395 by 7 that is 56 means each cell site is having 56 number of frequencies different frequencies then uh, frequency management and channel assignment in mobile telephony numbering and grouping set up access and paging channels channel assignment to cell sites and mobile units channel sharing and borrowing sectorization overlaid cells non fixed channel assignments then frequency management what is frequency management designing set up channels and voice channel it is done by fcc that is federal committee for communication numbering the channels and grouping the voice channels into subsets these are uh, these three processes are included in frequency management so what is channel assignment means the allocation of a specific channel to cell sites and mobile unit is called channel assignment a fixed channel set cell site long term basis a uh, during a call mobile unit short term basis channels are assigned by mts ideally channel assignment should be based on causing the least interface in the system so before assignment of channel it is uh, analyzed that there should be a least interference between the two cell sites numbering the channels the total number of channels in january 1988 is 832 but most mobile unit and systems are still operating on 666 channel system a channel consists of two frequency channel bandwidth that is one is low band and another is high band so two frequencies in channel 1 are 825.030 megahertz for mobile transmit and 870.030 megahertz for cell site transmit the two frequencies in channel 666 are 844.98 megahertz mobile transmit and 889.98 megahertz cell site transmit the 666 channels are divided into two groups that is block a system and block b system here we can see the management chart here the 666 channel six channels are there and the partition between this line show, showing uh, shows the partition between the uh, channels the upper part is called block a system and lower part is called block b system and the channels nearby this uh, division line are called control channels so each block has 333 channels the 42 setup channels are assigned as follows channel 313 to 333 in block a and channel 334 to 354 in block b as we can see here the 330 uh, 313 to 333 in block a are the So control channels and 334 to 354 in block B. Uh, set up channel, uh, set up control channels. The voice channels are assigned as follows: channel 1 to 312 in block A and channel 355 to 666 in block B. New additional spectrum allocation, 10 megahertz additional 166 channels are assigned. 
one megahertz is assigned below 825 megahertz or 870 megahertz additional channel will be numbered up to 849 megahertz or 894 megahertz and will then circle back the last channel number is 1023 or 210 there are no channels between channels 799 and 991 in this uh, our mobile telephony is nothing as cellular wireless network so cellular what is cellular network Cellular network is an underlying technology for mobile phones, personal communication system, wireless networking, etc. The technology is developed for mobile radio telephony to replace high power transmit a receiver system. Cellular network use lower power, shorter range, more transmitters for data transmission. Here I can, uh, we are saying that in cellular wireless network, we use lower power antenna. In uh, previous traditional networks, we cover, cover entire area by a single antenna, by a single antenna. So this antenna should be of very high power to cover all these larger area. If we divide this large area into small number of cells and each cell is having its individual antenna to cover this cell. So this antenna should not be of very high power. We can cover this small area, these small area with the help of low power antennas also. So this is the major advantage of cellular wireless technology over the conventional mobile phone system. So uh, features of cellular system is what? The wireless cellular system solve the problem of spectral co uh, cognition congestion and increase user capacity. The features of cellular system are as follows, offer very high ca capacity in limited spectrum. So with the help of cellular system, we can use the spectrum, uh, uh, spectrum utilization is uh, proper. Reuse of cha radio channel is different cells. So as uh, compared to previous uh, traditional mobile telephony system, in cellular system, the frequency reuse is possible. Now the it, it, the cellular system enables a fixed number of channels to serve an arbitrary large number of users by reusing the channel throughout the coverage region. Communication is always between mobile and base station, not directly between mobiles. Each cellular base station is allotted a group of radio channels within a small geographic area called a cell. Neighboring cells are assigned different channel groups. By limiting the coverage area to within the boundary of cells, the channel groups may be reused to cover different cells. Keep interface level within tolerable limits. Frequency reuse or frequency planning. Organization of wireless cellular network. Cellular network is organized into multiple low power transmitters, each 100 watt or less. So now the shapes of cells. The coverage area of cellular network are divided into cells, each cell having its own antenna for transmitting the signal. Each cell has its, uh, has its own frequency. Data communication in cellular network is served by base station, transmitter, receiver, and its control unit. The shape of cells can be either square or hexagon, but uh, we prefer the hexagon shape for cellular system. Square. A square cell has four neighbors at distance D and four, and four at distance root 2D. Between, uh, better if all adjacent antenna equidistance. Simplify choosing and switching the new antennas. In hexagon cells, a hexagon cell shape is highly recommendable for its easy coverage and calculation. It offers the following advantage that previous uh, provides equipment uh, equidistance antennas, distance between center to vertex equal length of side. Here we can say for uh, square uh, cell side, only four neighboring cells can be enter, uh, entertained. This side, these uh, cells are at D distance from it and these cells are root 2D distance are from it. Okay. In circular, in circular cell side, if we, uh, if we use circular cells, so this area is uncovered. 
Now, if we choose the hexagonal cells, if we choose the hexagonal cells, the cells are equidistant from each other and larger area can be covered and larger area can be covered. So we prefer hexagonal cells. Here we can see the hexagonal shape cell sites. Now next one is the global system for mobile communication that is GSM. What is GSM? GSM stands for global system for mobile communication. It is a digital cellular technology used for transmitting mobile voice and data services. The concept of GSM emerged from a cell-based mobile radio system at Bell Laboratories in the early 1970s. GSM is the name, the name of a standardization group established in 1982 to create a common European mobile telephone standard. GSM is the most widely accepted standard in telecommunication and it is implemented, uh, implemented globally. GSM is a circuit switch system that divides each 200 kilohertz channel into eight 25 kilohertz time stops. GSM operates on the mobile communication based 900 megahertz and 1800 megahertz in most part of world. In the US, GSM operates in the bands 850 megahertz and 1900 megahertz. GSM owns a market share of more than 70% of the world's digital cellular subscribers. GSM make use of narrowband time division multiple access technique for transmitting signals. GSM was developed using digital technology. It has an arbit uh, ability to carry 64 kbps to 120 mbps of data rates. Presently, GSM supports more than 1 billion mobile subscribers in more than 210 countries throughout the world. GSM provides basic to advanced voice and data services, including roaming services. Roaming is the ability to use your GSM phone number in another GSM network. GSM digitalizes the and compresses data, then, send, then sends it down to a channel with two other stream of user data each in its own time slots. Features of GSM, these are the listed features of GSM, improved spectrum efficiency, international roaming, low cost mobile sets and base station, high quality speech, com uh, compatibility with integrated service uh, digital network and other telephone company services, support for new and support for new services. Now the GSM architecture, it is the architecture of GSM in which we are having uh, here you can see that three parts that is that is ms ms means mobile station that in which we are having mobile equipment and sim card then bss in which we are having base station controller and base transceiver station and then msc in which we are having vlr hlr auc authentication center equipment identity register visitor location register, home location register. And after that, your mobile station is connected to BSS, BSS is connected to MSC, then MSC is connected to public networks. So this is the architecture. Here we can see the mobile unit. Mobile unit is connected with base station. Base station is connected with base transceiver station. Then base station controller is there. Okay, then uh, this information is goes to the MSC, MSC is uh, containing VLR, HLR, uh, EIR, AUC, GMSC, CBS, CBC, and after that, this MSC is connected to the uh, switching networks. A GSM network comprises of many functional units. These functional and interface are, are here. Then the components of the GSM architecture. I'm, I have already discussed that home location register, HLR, visitor location register, VLR, equipment identity register, EIR, authentication center, SMS service uh, serving center, gateway, ML, uh, gateway MSC, GMSC, chargeable center, and transcoder and adaptation unit, PRAU. So this MS, MS means mobile station in which the mobile equipment and uh, SIM card comes is connected to this BSS through wireless connections and then this BSS is connected to MSC through wired connection. 
So MSMB is communi communicate across the UM interface. This wireless connection is called the UM interface, and the wired connection between BSS and MSC is called A interface. So in GSM uh, GSM network area, in GSM network, the following areas are defined. Cell cell is the basic service area. One BTS covers one cell. Each cell is giving a cell global identity, CGI, a number that uniquely identifies the cell. Location area, a group of cells from a location area. This is the area that is paged when a subscriber gets an incoming call. Each location area is assigned a location area identity, LAI. Each location area is served by one or more BSCs. MSC, VLR service area. The area covered by one MSC is called the MSC Oblique VLR service area. PLMN, the area covered by one network operates in, is called a public land mobile network, PLMN. A PLMN can contains one or more MSCs. Now the GSM specification. The requirement for different personal communication services, PCS system differ for each PCS network Vital characteristic of the GSM specifications are here. Modulation. The modulation is the process of transferring the input data into suitable for, for format for transmission medium. The transmitted data is demodulated back to its original form at the receiving end. The GSM uses Gaussian minimum shift keying modulation method, GMSK. What is the access method? Radio spectrum being a limited resources that is consumed and divided among all the users. GSM devised a com combination of TDMA, FDMA as the method to divide the bandwidth among the users. In this process, FDMA part divides the frequency of the total 25 megahertz bandwidth into 124 carrier frequencies of 200 kilohertz bandwidth. Each base station is assigned with one or multiple frequencies. And each of these frequencies is divided into eight time slots using a TDMA scheme. Each of these slots are used for both transmission as well as reception of data. These slots are separated by time so that a mobile unit does not transmit and receive data at the same time. Now, what is the transmission rate in GSM? The total symbol rate for GSM is one bit per symbol. In GMS skip uh, produces 270.833 kilo symbols per second. The gross transmission rate of time slot is 22.8 kbps. GSM is a digital system with an over-the-air bit rate of 270 kbps. Frequency band, the uplink frequency range specified for GSM is 933 to 960 megahertz. Basic 900 megahertz band only. The downlink frequency band is 892 to 915 megahertz. Then the channel spacing. Channel spacing indicate the spacing between adjacent carrier frequency for GSM. It is 200 kilohertz. Speech coding. For speech coding or processing, GSM user uses linear predictive coding LPC this tool compresses the bitrate and gives an estimate of the speech parameter. When the audio signal passes through a filter, it mimics the vocal track. Here, the speech is encoded at 13 kbps. Now, the duplex distance. Duplex distance is the space between the uplink and downlink frequencies. The duplex distance for GSM is 80 megahertz, where each channel has two frequencies that, is, that are 80 megahertz apart. So MISC frame duration is 4.615 MS. Duplex technique is frequency division duplexing access mode previously known as WCDMA. Speed channels per RF channel are eight. Then the addressing uh, types and identifiers in GSM. GSM treats the user and the equipment in different ways. Phone numbers, subscriber and equipment identifiers are some of the known ones. There are many other identifiers that have been well defined, which are required for subscribers mobility management and for addressing the remaining network elements. Vital addresses and identifiers that are used in GSM are addressed below. International Mobile Station Equipment Identity, IMEI, all of you know that. 
the international mobile station equipment identity looks more like a serial number which distinct, uh, distinctively identifies a mobile station internationally this is allotted by the equipment manufacturer and registered by the network operator who stores in the equipment identity register eir by means of impi one recognized obsolete stolen and non functional equipment following are the part of impi number uh, type approval code tac that is six decimal place centrally assigned final assembly code fac it is also of six decimal place assigned by the manufacturer serial number snr six decimal places assigned by the manufacturer spare one decimal place so that your imei number is the combination of tac fac snr and sp it uniquely characterizes a mobile station and gives cues about the manufacturer and the, and the date of manufacturing now the international mobile subscriber identity that is imsi every registered user has an original international mobile subscriber identity with a valid imei stored in their subscriber identity module that is in sim imsi comprises of the following part first is mobile country code that is mcc that is of three decimal place internationally standardized mobile network code mnc the decimal uh, two decimal place for unique identification of mobile network within the country mobile subscriber identification number msin maximum 10 decimal places identification number of the subscriber in the home mobile network now the mobile subscriber isdn number the uh, authentic telephone number of mobile station is the mobile subscriber isdn number based on the sim a mobile station can have many msi sdns as each subscriber is assigned with separate msi sdn to their sim respectively listed below is the structure followed by msi sdn categories as they are defined based on the international isdn number plan first is country code that is cc up to 3 decimal place national destination code ndc typically 2 to 3 decimal places subscriber number sn maximum 10 decimal places so this is all about our wireless techno wireless communication mobile telephony and gsm architecture thank you students this is our uh, now it is all about our session one thank you